Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again. Let's bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer and then look to be taught by him through the power of his spirit. Father in heaven, I ask, Lord, that you will be with each one of us. Bless us today as we spend some time in your word and then reading a little from the pen of inspiration. Lord, may we be instructed, may we be encouraged and admonished to live for you and to hold fast though the heavens fall. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read from 2 John 8 and 9. 2 John 8 and 9. And here's what it says. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. Now you see why I say doctrine is important. While it's also important to have the love of Christ lived out in your life, if we are not listening to the doctrines in God's word, if we are not studying them, then the Bible simply says we do not have the doctrine of Christ. That is pretty important, I believe, and I'm sure you do as well. So let's let the pen of inspiration flush this out a little further as I read from Selected Messages, book one, page 41, starting on page 41 of Selected Messages, book one. Here's what I'm going to read to you. Soon every possible effort will be made to discount and pervert the truth of the testimonies of God's Spirit. We must have in readiness the clear, straight messages that since 1846 have been coming to God's people. There will be those, once united with us in the faith, who will search for new strange doctrines, for something odd and sensational to present to the people. Now, I don't know how to say this, but I'm seeing more and more of this. People seeming to strive or pull things out of here and there and weave together some new strange belief or idea about what has come or what is coming, uh, reinvent the testimonies and the doctrines. It ought not to be so. In fact, that itself is a uh, fulfillment of Bible scripture. There will be, uh, they will bring all in all conceivable fallacies and will present them as coming from Mrs. White that they may beguile the souls. Those who have been treating the, treated the light that the Lord has given as a common thing will not be benefited by the instruction presented. Those who, are, who will misrepresent the messages that God has given in accordance with their spiritual blindness, some will yield their faith and will deny the truth of the messages pointing to them as falsehoods. Some will lay, lay up to ridicule, working against the light that God has been given for years, and some who are weak in the faith will thus be led astray. But others will greatly be helped by the messages, not the person, not though not personally addressed, they will be corrected and will be led to shun the evils specified. The Spirit of the Lord will be in the instruction and doubts existing in the minds will be swept away. So, we will be presented with possibly new and interesting things that seem wonderful and sensational, but they are not what was meant to be taught. Study to show yourself approved. Precept upon precept, word upon word. If you're reading something from her writings, test it by the word of God. It has got to all line up. It has to make sense or we must reject it and stick to the good, old, solid truths that we've been holding on to for so long. The testimonies themselves will be key that will explain messages given as scripture is explained by scripture. Many will read with eagerness the messages, reproving wrong, that they may learn what they may do to be saved. These messages are to find a place in their heart and transformation will take place. So, as we read from the pen of inspiration, as we read from the word of God, as the Holy Spirit convicts us, it should be working to change our heart, to change our soul, to change our mind. But we must beware of those who would twist and contort the messages that were given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit to their own ends. Uh, so let us each one pray that we are not deceived, study for ourselves, not take somebody else's word for it as gospel truth, but read it for yourself, study it for yourself, and ask the Holy Spirit to represent truth to you. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we've covered a little interesting talk today, uh, one in which we're looking at 
the idea that some will uh, will take the writings and will twist them as people have done with the Bible and will have them saying things that are not actually intended to be said and will be leading people this way and that way. May we not be led astray uh, by cunningly devised fables, but may we be spirit led, listening to that still small voice, leading us in your direction. I ask this for myself and I ask this for each and every person who would be listening uh, this evening. And I pray these things in the name of the... Jesus, and I ask these things, amen. Well, folks, I want to thank you for being here, uh, and I just want to encourage you uh, again, when you're reading, when you're studying, make sure uh, that you are listening and taking the entire word, not one little piece here, one little piece there. Take the entire reading, find out who it was written to, why it was written to them. Ask yourself, does it apply to me? Go from there. Don't listen to somebody who's pulled a little here and there and has some far-fetched idea about what might be happening. We must take God at his entire word. So just keep that in mind and please Continue to study, continue to dig. Jesus is coming soon and we must be ready. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.